today's message is about what does the Holy Spirit do? What is the work of the Holy Spirit in a Christian? Have you ever asked yourself this question and you wonder why in the first place do we need the Holy Spirit anyway? Okay, now the Bible is quite clear that the Holy Spirit is active in our world. Uh, the book of Acts, which sometimes goes by the longer title of the Acts of the Apostles, uh, could just accurately be called the Acts of the Holy Spirit through the Apostles. Now, after the Apostolic Age, there have been uh, some changes. The Spirit does not inspire further scripture. For example, uh, you will find that... Uh, the Holy Spirit is not, we don't have new scriptures. We don't have uh, uh, something else to be added in the Bible. But uh, he continues to do his work in the, in the world. So, first, we have to ask ourselves, what is the work of this Holy Spirit? If, if the Holy Spirit now is not giving us new words for the Bible, then what is his work in, in a believer? And uh, we have to know and understand that the Holy Spirit does many things in the lives of believers. He is the believer's helper, okay? One thing we have to understand, the, the Holy Spirit is a helper, okay? He helps us in different things. Remember what the Bible says in the book of uh, John 14, 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. So he helps us, is our helper. He helps us in different ways, okay? And also we have to understand that the Holy Spirit also, uh, he indwells believers and seals them. You are sealed, okay? He seals you until the day of redemption. And uh, this indicates that the Holy Spirit presence in, uh, in the believer is irreversible. He guards and guarantees the salvation of the ones that he indwells, okay? Remember what the Bible says in uh, Ephesians, uh, Ephesians uh, 1 verse 13, that the Holy Spirit is sealed inside us? See this one. In whom also you trusted, okay? After that you heard the word of truth. What is that truth? The gospel of your salvation. Mm -hmm. What happened after that? In whom also after that you believed, the moment you believed the gospel, uh -huh, you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So what is that work of that Holy Spirit who was sealed inside you? He was sealed to be an earnest of an inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, which is your body, uh, your soul and spirit, which was purchased, unto the praise of his glory. So until the body is redeemed and then it emits the same qualities and the same uh, 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 um, the same uh, style of the purchase possession, which is your soul and your spirit, then the Holy Spirit will stay in as as what as an honest as an insurance that hey you are here. Yes, your body may be fallen, but one day you'll be redeemed. Are you seeing that? So the Holy Spirit indwells and He seals. He is sealed inside us, okay? He is sealed in his, inside us. Now, of course the Bible says that uh, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Eh? Don't, don't forget that in uh, Ephesians 4.30. Who is sealed unto the day of redemption? That, that's uh, Ephesians 4.30, trying to show us that uh, the Holy Spirit is sealed to the day of redemption. Don't grieve him because when you do sinful things, you will feel bad. And it's not really you feeling bad because human beings, they, they enjoy sin. The one who is grieving is the Holy Spirit inside you because he is sealed. He can't get out. And that's why he's, he's a feeling bad. That's why when you smoke and you do wrong things and you try to steal and do all that and you're saved, you feel bad because the Holy Spirit is grieving inside you. Okay? Now, another thing is that the Holy Spirit assists believers in prayer. Okay? He assists, assists believers in prayer. And as well intercedes for God's people. Okay? So, let's, let's first uh, start with Jude. The book of Jude. Uh, Jude 1 verses uh, 20. Let's see about this. He helps us when we are praying. But you, beloved, building up yourselves on, on your most holy faith... Praying in the Holy Ghost, okay? Praying in the Holy Ghost. So we are praying, but the Holy Spirit is helping us as we are praying. And also he is interceding for us, Romans. 
Okay, romance, uh, romance. Uh, what? Let me let me check. Just uh, give me a minute. Somebody was trying to call my phone, but okay, he's interceding. This one I I will show you in uh, Romans eight twenty six. Okay, Romans eight verse twenty six. Romans eight twenty six. It's saying. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray, for as we ought. But the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Have you ever been at a time that you feel so low and things are so bad? It's like you, 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 you feel so bad and, and you just make some groanings. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, please, Lord. Oh. And the Holy Spirit is understanding what you're praying because... He is interceding for you. As you're making those groanings, you're just crying. You don't even know what to say. He understands you. He knows your pain. He understands your thoughts. So he's interceding, praying for you. Because the Bible says, He searches the hearts, no, uh, the, uh, and he, he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. So he searches your heart, and he knows what is the mind of the Spirit? Because He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So He's praying for us. At times when you feel low and weak, the Holy Spirit is praying for you. That is one of His works, okay? Now something else is that uh, the Holy Spirit, uh -huh, something else, the Holy Spirit regenerates and renews the believer. We are regenerated. Now, what is regenerating? Uh, uh, regeneration. Remember in Ezekiel 36, verse 26. Uh, Ezekiel 36, verse 26. It tells us about that, uh, that uh, people, God told his people that I will give you a heart of flesh. Because these people, they had a heart of stone. They could not understand the things of God. And God promised that one day, one time, I'll give you a heart of flesh. That you'll be able to follow the things of God in wholesomeness, okay? He will give them that. So he would regenerate them. See what the Bible says in Titus 3, 5. Uh, Titus uh, 3, verses 5, okay? See about this regeneration. It says, not by works of righteousness, which you have done, Okay, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and re renewing of the Holy Ghost. Are you seeing? So we were renewed, we were, re we were regenerated, okay? Regenerated, we were given a heart of flesh from a heart of stone which could not even believe in God. The Holy Spirit gives us a new heart and a new mind, okay? Are you understanding that one, okay? Now, uh... The same moment also, at the moment of salvation, the Holy Spirit also does something else, okay? He baptizes the believer into the body of Christ. Now, let's assume this is the body of Christ. We are all inside him, okay? We are all inside Christ. We have been baptized into one spirit. That's what the Bible says in Romans uh, Romans 6, 3. See, Romans, Romans 6, verses 3. It says that we are now in one body. Baptize all of us in one spirit. Uh, uh, know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? We are all baptized into his death. Like, it's like we died all of us with Christ and we rose all of us with Christ when we believe the gospel. Because the gospel is all about understanding how and why Jesus died. That Jesus died for our sins and he was buried and rose again. And when we believe that he did that for us, then it means we also died with him and rose with him. Are you seeing the point? So we are all, all of us in, uh, in him. Okay, We are all baptized in him. So we are like him. Are you understanding the point? Another thing is that believers receive the new birth by the power of the Spirit. Okay, New birth by the power of the Holy Spirit. Is the one who gives us that new birth. Okay. John 3, 5 to 8. Uh, John uh, 3, uh, 5 to 8. <clears throat> it tells us about this. It says, Jesus answers, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, hmm, you see, the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, 
What is born of flesh? You're born of your mother. Your mother bore you into this world. How? Water broke and you were born. Okay? Uh, science usually says that immediately the water breaks, then the child is born. That is the beginning of life outside uh, the womb. Okay? So you have to be born of water and the spirit. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Are you seeing the point? Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell where it cometh, and where it goes, even one that is born of the Spirit. Of course, it's the same way. Now, what, what is the Bible trying to say here? He's trying to say, when you, when you want to know that the wind is moving from uh, west, to, to east. What, what do you see? Do you look at the wind? No. You look at papers going from west to east and you can say, wow, look at those papers, the direction that they are going. Look at those trees, the direction that they are going. You can know that the wind is going from west to east. Okay? Now, that's the same thing with the believer. You cannot say you're saved, but we cannot see your fruits moving in the, the way of God. You cannot say you're saved, and uh, the Holy Spirit is going towards the, 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 the west, east side and you're going towards the west and you say you're saved. How will you be like, it, it, it can't happen. Where the wind is going is where also we should see the fruits. So if you're saved, then we should see that, okay? So that's exactly what the Bible talks about, the new birth. A woman, a normal woman, gives birth to you when the water breaks. But you are, you are given, uh, uh, God you, you, you get born again in the spirit when the Holy Spirit of God dwells in you, okay? So one is for the woman, one is for God, okay? And uh, with that, you may ask, why, why does the Bible talk about that you must be born of water? Because it is only human beings who can be saved. So you can say um, an animal or uh, some stone or something else, is is saved yes i know an animal is born of uh, water but uh, christ became man okay he was both the son of man and the son of god so we have to take both natures the son of man of a woman and the son of god you be born of the spirit that's the only way you can enter the kingdom of god i don't know if i've explained there better so that you can understand now the other thing is uh you have to understand that uh the Spirit con co comforts believers with fellowship and joy as they go through a hostile world. This world is so hostile and things are so bad. But the Holy Spirit, He comforts us. He counsels us. He intercedes for us. He advocates and strengthens us in this fallen world. First Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.6, it says about this. First, First Thessalonians 1 verses 6, it says about this comfort Okay, and you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. So these people are receiving word with much affliction. They, they were, there was a lot of affliction in that time, but they had joy in the Holy Ghost. You may be afflicted, you may be feeling down and things are really tough on you, but when you have the Holy Spirit, he'll give you joy at such a time. And also 2 uh, Corinthians uh, 13 14 uh, second uh, Corinthians 13 verse 14 it also speaks about the same thing it says the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all the grace of Jesus Christ and the love so he is giving you the love and the communion and the grace okay are you are you, are you seeing the point so the Holy Spirit, it's, he cancels us, he comforts us and gives us this kind of things. Now, the other thing is that uh, the Holy Spirit also, uh, in his mighty power, he fills believers with uh, what we call, uh, what we call the, the fruits, okay? The fruits of the Holy Spirit. And uh, in this, the Spirit, in his mighty power, He's giving these people all those kind of joy and peace and these kind of things, causing believers to overflow with hope. Do you know you can't have hope unless you have these fruits? You can't have peace unless you have the Holy Spirit. You can't have self-control, goodness, 
uh, generosity, kindness, joy, faithfulness, patience, modesty, chastity, gentleness. You can't have this unless you have the Holy Spirit. It's not possible for you. Because it is the Lord who causes you to have to overflow with all this hope. Because all these fruits, they give us a lot of hope. Okay, They give us a lot of hope. Romans 15. Romans 15, verse 13. Romans 15, 13. It says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. So who is giving you that hope and joy and peace and long-suffering and all that? It is the Holy Ghost. It's giving you that. So that he may be able to help you even in times when you feel your low. Okay? That is what the Holy Spirit is giving you. Okay? That's those fruits. Now, something else we have to understand. Now, the Holy Spirit sanctifies us. Sanctification is another work of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. Now, sanctification uh, is basically like washing out, washing out dirty things, washing us and cleaning us and cleaning us so that we may be like Christ, okay? He's cleaning us up, all our infirmities and sanctifying and, uh, you know, the places where we were weak, the places where we, we hated more, he's cleaning us. Have you ever understood since when you got saved? You hate less, you love more. You curse less, you, you know, you do the things of God before you, you, you never used to love people, you never used to do good. But God is, the Holy Spirit is, uh, is sanctifying you, changing you, cleaning you up, okay, every day, okay. Now the Spirit sets himself against the desires of the flesh and leads the believer into righteousness slowly by slowly, slowly by slowly, leading you into righteousness. The way you are when you got saved is not the way you are right now, okay? Unless you don't, uh, you are not truly saved. The way you are, you never used to read the Bible, you never loved the, the things of God, but when you got the Holy Spirit, he, he gave you this and now you enjoy more. Look at Galatians 5, 16 to 18, it says, this, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the last of the flesh. You see, when you're walking in the spirit, everything of the flesh starts to diminish. For the flesh lasteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that you cannot do things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you're no longer under the law. Hmm, you see? You see, really, really important to understand that the Holy Spirit is cleaning you up when you walk with him. Now, something else is that, uh, <clears throat> just like I told you, the works of the flesh become less evident. The works of the flesh, uh, you know, fornication, stealing, murders, and all that, they, 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 they become less evident in your life when you have the Holy Spirit. They start diminishing. And the good fruits of the Spirit are becoming more evident. Just go and read Galatians uh, 19 to 26 and you'll see these fruits coming up just like I told you love joy peace patience, kindness goodness faithfulness self-control and now the works of the flesh they become is like they are being suppressed that's another thing of the Holy Spirit he helps you to do that and something else is that um, the believer the believer okay uh, the believer is commanded to be filled with the Spirit okay now, this means that they are to yield themselves to the Spirit's full control, okay? Now, that is according to Ephesians 5.18. Now, you have to understand, when you are in full control, the Holy Spirit is in full control of you, then the Holy Spirit gifts you with several kinds of gifts, okay? Which are called the spiritual gifts, okay? Now, it's according to 1 Corinthians 12 verses 4. Those kind of gifts that the Holy Spirit gives you. Go and read 1 Corinthians 12 4, which is the fear of God, piety, knowledge, fortitude, counsel, understanding, wisdom. He gives you all these gifts. And these spiritual gifts that believers possesses, they are given so that they may be able, he may be able to uh, use you in a great and mighty way when you have the fear of God. You're going to show a good testimony. When you have piety, piety is basically 
uh, someone who enjoys doing the things of God, going to church, uh, going all those rituals of the church, going to church, uh, doing good, uh, helping the needy, and uh, all those kind of things. Knowledge of the word of God, fortitude, counsel, and, and so forth. So those are some of the things that the Holy Spirit gives you, okay? Another thing is that the Holy Spirit also does work among unbelievers, okay? In the unbelievers, what does it do to the uh, non-believers? He convicts them, okay? He convicts the world of sin. You see, it is the work of the Holy Spirit to draw people unto Christ. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. Who draws people to Christ? Are you seeing the point? Because Jesus promised that he would send the Holy Spirit to convict the world concerning sin and judgment, uh, 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 sin and righteousness and judgment. Remember in John 16 verse 8, what Jesus said? John 16 verse 8. Remember Jesus giving this saying, and when he's come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. You see, the work of the Holy Spirit is to reprove the world of sin. Is to push you and tell you what you're doing is not right. What you're doing is not right. Get right with God. Get saved. Get saved. You see, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay? That's the work of the Holy Spirit. He convicts the world of sin. And also, the Holy Spirit testifies of Christ. That's another thing you have to understand. He also testifies of Christ. As uh, John 15, 26 says, he testifies of Christ. And uh, uh, of course, pointing people to the Lord. Now, currently, as we talk, the Holy Spirit is also restraining restraining sin and combating the secret power of lawlessness in the world. Who is restraining? It's the Holy Spirit. He's restraining. 2 Thessalonians 2, 6 to 10. Okay? 2 Thessalonians 2, uh, 6 to 10. If it was not the Holy Spirit, the world would be so bad by now. Uh, see what the Bible says. And now... Ye know that withhold it, that he might be, that he may re be revealed in his time, for the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he now who letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Who is letting? Who is holding? Who is holding the mystery of lawlessness? Who is holding the antichrist from coming to the picture? The Holy Spirit. And then that wicked shall be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy the brightness of his coming. Because even him who is coming is after the working of Satan with all powers, signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they may be saved. But because there are some who already receive the love of the truth, those people are saved, and the Holy Spirit is restraining the wicked one from taking control, because we love Christ and we love truth. And that's why the Holy Spirit is holding and is restraining this. Okay? Another work of the Holy Spirit is that uh, he, has, uh, 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 he has a role. And this role is to give believers wisdom. Okay? The Holy Spirit gives us wisdom to understand God. You know, you can't understand God unless you have the wisdom of God. B back in the days, I used to read the Bible before I was saved. I, I used to read the Bible, but it was very flat words. I could not understand. What is this Bible talking about? This Bible is so hard, and this Bible is so... It's like I'm reading a rock. I don't understand these words. Thou, 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 thou. I, I, it, I, I could not understand the things of God. But when the Holy Spirit came in, I can understand the Bible. And you can even see the way I teach you guys here. I teach you with the wisdom of God, not in my own wisdom, not in my own knowledge. The Holy Spirit gives us that wisdom to understand God. And the Spirit, because the Bible says, the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person which is in him? Let me, let me just show you the verse, 1 Corinthians 2.10. 1 Corinthians uh, 2, verses 10. We can read to 11. Okay, it says, But God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit. 
For the Spirit searches all things here, yeah, the deep things of God. The Spirit is the one who is searching the things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, hmm? save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. So, it is through the Spirit of God that we are able to understand the things of God. Wisdom. He gives us wisdom. Wisdom. Okay? And since you have been given the amazing gift of wisdom, and that gift of the Spirit God which is inside us, we can comprehend the thoughts of God. We can understand the thoughts of God. As revealed in the scripture. Okay? Because the spirit helps us to understand. He gives us that understanding. And this is the wisdom from God. Okay? The wisdom from God. Rather than the wisdom from man. No amount of knowledge, like I've read to you, can replace the Holy Spirit's teaching. Okay? Don't, don't be lied by anyone. No amount can replace. See, now we have received, not the spirit of this world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given uh, us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the world, not in the world, words, uh, uh, words which man's wisdom teaches, but the Holy Ghost teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Does it make some sense? Does it make some sense to uh, want to be saved? Do you want to be saved? Because unless you have the Holy Spirit, there are so many things you don't know. And if you find yourself you don't have all these things that I've taught, I've taught here, then ask yourself, do I really have the Holy Spirit? Am I really saved? Go and see the other video which I've done about uh, if you can, uh, can you lose the Holy Spirit? And you'll be able to understand much more about the Holy Spirit. And if you're not saved, please believe the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all about understanding why and how Jesus died. Why did Jesus die? 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Jesus died for our sins. He was buried, rose again, the third day according to the scriptures. Why did he die? He died for our sins. He didn't die for vain, in vain. And how did he die? He died by shedding his blood. So what is the reason for shedding his blood? The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. But it has to be blood from an innocent person, not a sinner. Why blood? Because the life of the flesh is in the blood, Leviticus 17.11. And I've given you the blood upon the altar to make uh, atonement for your souls. That's what the Bible says. So it has to be innocent blood atoning for your souls. So something has to die, and dying has to mean the blood has to be taken out. Why, why does that person or that uh, creature has to die? It is because we are all sinners. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. We have sinned against God. But 2,000 years ago, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He laid his life for us. He was innocent. He did nothing. He laid his life for us. So that whosoever will believe in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Do you believe in him? Do you believe that Jesus did not die for nothing? He died for you. He was buried and rose again, as the Bible says. If you believe that, all you need to do is just to confess what you've believed. Confess it to God in prayer and tell him, Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins, you were buried and rose again, the third day according to the scriptures. I believe and I receive that atonement, payment of sin, by faith. And when you do that, my friends, you're saved. And immediately you will be sealed by the Holy Spirit, who will give you understanding, wisdom. He will restrain, restrain, uh, restrain you from the evil works of the enemy. And all those kind of things that I've told you give you the fruits of the Holy Spirit and, and uh, the gifts and, and all those kind of things. And you'll be sanctified every day when you read his word and you continue doing what is right. Hope this has been a blessing to you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and also you can share the video for others to be able to understand. And also you can subscribe to watch more videos that we post every day to edify the body of Christ. And also at the comment section, comment, uh, not comments, uh, at the description below we have uh, other channels that we have posted different content. Please just click the links 
and you can go to those other channels and be able to be sanctified even much more and learn more. God bless you and have a great time.